This is the Home Tech Podcast for maybe Friday, September 22nd from Sarasota, Florida. I'm Seth Johnson. From Reynoldsburg, Ohio, I'm TJ Huddleston. And from Pickering, Ontario, I'm Gavin Campbell. And welcome to the Home Tech Podcast, the podcast all about home automation, home technology, and, you know, a weekly, maybe-ish discussion. I don't know. It could be weekly. It could be not. It could be that we're recording on Thursday, and I'm probably not going to have this edited for Friday. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it, 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 we'll, we'll do something. We'll, it, it could be a Friday that you listen to this on. Who knows? I knew, I do know that tomorrow is um, iPhone delivery day, though. Ooh. So um, yeah, yeah, for for... For people who have done the pre-order thing or the day that they are supposed to get delivered, it's tomorrow. And I've I've made sure that I am home. Um, I had the uh, what's it called the, uh, the, the 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 jabby thing set up for Friday, and I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Can't be out of the house. Got to be home for UPS. So uh, yeah, now now I'm my got my uh, vaccine thing done earlier in the week and felt miserable today. So. <laughs> My arm hurts. Why does your arm hurt so badly? I don't know. It's all that 5G going in there, I guess. Is that the, the flu shot one? The flu shot, double COVID, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's like oh, all yeah. sorts of stuff. The flu shot one made my arm super numb for a while. I don't think I had the COVID one at the same time, but I think they were done in separate arms. Yeah. And it just my arm was not usable for like 24 hours. I think it's all doubled up this year. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Like, who knows? I just, I went to the thing. They gave me a shot for something. It could be anything. I don't know what it was. They're just trying to give everybody shots now. So you come in, they're going to give you two, maybe five shots. The guy was really good. Like, I, I was like, you know, you, usually you feel a little pressure or anything. No, there was nothing. I'm like, did you actually do anything? He's like, oh, I'm getting good. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or or it's Florida and you got one of the people that aren't actually given the vaccine now. <laughs> I just get the placebo. <laughs> yeah. He's not even doing it. He's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got the uh, I've got two iPhones scheduled to be delivered tomorrow. One for me, one for the wife. We're moving her over from Android, so we'll see nice. how that goes. Nice. She's uh, she's not very happy about it. Let's say that, but um, she's always using my phone to take pictures and stuff. So we're just, just gonna go ahead and nip that in the bud and, and just replace her phone. Just be very patient about it because these are the type of things ca- that can ruin relationships. You know, like mm. you know, go carefully, tread lightly. You know. Uh, make the transition easy. I don't want to see single TJ next week. That would be a pretty cheap divorce, I guess. So <laughs> maybe this is uh, setting up for other things. You know? But no, they're uh, they're set to be delivered to my warehouse. So um, the, the place that I rent from, I guess they just like give all the UPS and FedEx drivers and stuff like the garage codes. And so they literally just come into our units and drop everything off. And so I'm hoping there's no problem tomorrow. Like they're pretty used to as long as it's not a new driver, they're used to just coming in the unit and just dropping things off with nobody there. So hopefully they have that same thing with the phones tomorrow because I don't want to wait till next week to get it. Hmm. Just wanna, just wanna get it replaced and be done with it. Yep, yep. She'll be, she'll, she'll get to to be a blue buddy now. That that's that's the most important part. She can be a blue buddy, and you can like send mm, her. Yeah, the, we, you can say congrats, and it'll do like confetti or something. She'll be like, oh, that's. Yeah, we we use WhatsApp, but. <laughs> All right, that, that that is not an appeal, but uh, a couple people will be happy about it, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, when you when you are when you do have like, um, well, anybody that you talk to overseas, but then also like uh, mixed like ecosystems on your phones the uh whatsapp is definitely the better way to go yeah yeah especially when you have like inter- international family members and stuff like that whatsapp is definitely the the go-to only way to go yep yep but it was good to see everybody in the hub though you know posting their orders they're getting their new phones tomorrow they're all excited about it except, except for richard. Poor, richard. Yeah, poor richard <laughs> you know i felt i i felt i almost wanted to order one and send it to him but, uh, you know, just to f- I, I, I enjoyed, you know, watching what he had to go through, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I heard the uh, Smart Home Show and he was talking about that. I think it was the same day. <laughs> so it was <laughs> it was a, it was a very angry uh, sounding Richard. Uh, it was yes. ticked off at uh, AT&T, which is, um, yeah, I, dealing with them is kind of why I moved away from that. And I kind of go through the Apple process that Adam was talking about on that show. But like, yeah, it's just a, I don't know, like a lease or a loan or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. The, in, earlier in the week, I can pre-order my phone and it just puts it in the cart. And then when the day comes along, you just hit check out and that's it. So like, it's it's probably the easiest, most painless process that I've ever had to deal with when upgrading phones. And I do it every year now. So like, it's super easy. Yeah, I don't I don't really know. I guess I could buy the phone, but I don't I don't know. 
I don't really want to do that. Yeah, mine, mine was pretty easy. The only thing is AT&T maybe upload a picture of my ID. They were like, I guess it's some kind of like scam verification thing. Maybe because I ordered two, I guess. I'm not really sure. Um, but they they made me upload the, the ID. It scared me, though, because it was like, you have 24 hours to do this. We're canceling your order. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me do that right now. We don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to mess with that. You have to you know? threaten me. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and just correct that so there's no problem. But then it didn't tell me anything until like yesterday. Then it actually updated the shipping. And I was like, okay, we're good. Did uh did did you guys get a watch or anything? I I we forgot to ask about that last week. Nah, I'm not like a physical no. jewelry person. Mm. But you know what? Ever since they announced the new watch, my current watch won't last more than a day. Mm, so mm. like it is that's always the case when they announce new hardware, your your old hardware starts to fail you. It's planning. I think you're so. just noticing it now. You're just like. Yeah. Mm. It's just not so shiny anymore. No, it's now lasting a day. It's like nine o'clock and starts buzzing, you know, low battery. And then I have like another half an hour maybe from that. I blame Bill Gates. The other day, uh, my wife was like, are you going to get a new watch? I'm like, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Only because you asked. Who wants to know? Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, I was like, "Uh, I wasn't going to, but now I am. Pull the trigger on on the, the... Apple Watch Ultra thing that's been sitting in my cart. I've been kind of staring at that one for a while. I'm like, ooh, yeah, getting the Ultra. I'm huh? gonna go with the big, oh. the big guy. I don't know. I don't mm. know how I'm gonna like it. I may, I might go return it and go back to the smaller one. But we'll see. Just so expensive. They yeah, are. Yeah. yeah, but the battery life is supposed to be better. Which you know, I thanks. Know. <laughs> it's like two or three days or something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be like three days. I don't know. That's crazy. I get about a day out of. Well, I guess mine's dead now. So. I used to get a day out of it, and um, now it's it's on the red, red thing. So yeah, same here. Yeah, hmm. that's weird. Step one: don't be poor. Step, Step two: <laughs> don't install the Snoopy watch face on your. <laughs> Legitimately, though, the Snoopy watch face is actually pretty cool. Like uh, you know, everybody was so excited about that. Like I, I was reading so many comments, and there was like a thousand comments on this one article about the Snoopy faces, and like everybody was loving it. Yeah, no, it's it's got like it, it, this morning I, I had heard, I think, on another podcast somewhere, somebody talking about it and saying that they um, basically had made like a hundreds of these drawings or something to be, you know, generate like it, if it figured out what you were doing at the time or what time of day it was, it would have a relevant drawing or something on the watch face. And so, like, I turned it on this morning just while we were sitting down. Uh, with, you know, my daughter was eating breakfast and we were sitting down at the table and I turned it on to see what it looked like. And Snoopy was like chowing down and eating breakfast, <laughs> eating a donut. So I was like, <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, but then every time I, I looked at it, it had a different drawing on it. So that's kind of cool. Technology. What will they think up next? Uh, well, uh, there was a lot of stuff that Amazon thought of uh, this week uh, and we've got a ton of stuff to get into so what do you guys say we jump into these home tech headlines here let's do let's it let's do it all right well forget amazon we'll talk about apple again one more time uh, we should probably should have built this into the previous thing we were talking about but did you know that the uh, iphone 15 pro and iphone 15 pro max will be the first thread enabled smartphones um according to apple and i remember seeing this kind of on one of the slides that there was a thread radio built into this thing so Kind of interesting. Um, there's an article we'll link to in the, the show notes, but really no one knows what they're going to do. There's speculation that it's going to be like maybe a thread border router. So you can do like quicker device to device connectivity over an Apple home. No one really knows why it's they're doing this, but it's going to be built into the phones. And I, I, you're, you certainly couldn't leave like your iPhone 15 as a as a hub inside the house like it's going to disappear off the network at some point in time right so it can't you really can't it wouldn't replace like an apple tv or or something right or a home pod i guess well just in case you accidentally have an extra iphone 15 laying around you can use this as the router now. <laughs> i guess so it's really strange like if nicole if nicole doesn't like her iphone then i guess that's what i'm doing with this one so <laughs> yeah Congratulations. You have a new thousand dollar plus uh, thread hub. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I think they've been Apple was asked by a couple of reporters you know, what the what the thread radio is for. And, and they didn't really get an answer for it either. So it's either it's either something that's not being actively used right now or it's just not that big of a deal for anybody to care about. 
because I was trying to find out like why, and there was a couple articles talking about them discussing with Apple, but them not even saying anything. So it's all speculation at this point. Could it be possible that later on they you you add the iPhone to the matter as a device, for example, you could do tracking with it or mm. control certain things with it or get reporting sensors, you know, yeah. sensors, yeah, etc. Because you, you can know. do a home assistant, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hmm. So maybe that's possible. That would be nice. Yeah, that so that would be variables and things that could be introduced inside of the the uh, ecosystem. Eh, I don't know. It, it, it also, this article says that Google is also reportedly working on a network, a thread network stack inside Android phones, also potentially allowing them to function as thread border routers. I, I don't know. Um, it's a weird. It's a weird little fun fact that the these phones have that built in, but Apple typically doesn't like talk about this for a while. Like they'll activate it like in two years when these phones are out there and this particular technology, this is only in the pro and the pro max. So these are like the, the bigger more expensive phones with the nice cameras, the flagship phones, if you will, the next year, you know, a year from now, that technology will be kind of like rotated down into the iPhone 16s. And so Apple waits, typically waits until, there's like a mass amount of these things in there before they turn any kind of special feature on that, that requires you to have, you know, they're not, they're not going to turn it on and just like, Oh yeah. To get the special thing, you have to have um, the iPhone 15 pro and pro max, the flagship phones that cost so much right now. Nobody's going to do that. Everybody's going to complain about mm-hmm. it. They'll wait a couple of years and they're like, Oh yeah. If you still have one of those old iPhone 15 pro max things, uh, it, it has it built into congratulations, your three-year-old phone is now a thread border router. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. We, we'll probably have to wait for Apple to do something with this thing. That's kind of what I was thinking, like an upcycling thing, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, this is this is a useful device still. Like, keep it around. Exactly. And who knows? Maybe the thread radio was thrown in for free when they were getting all their other radios, yeah. you know? And they're like, yeah, might as well. It's already on the chip. Let's add it. Yeah, that one that one BLE and Wi-Fi 6 and, and Matter chip are like $6 or something. So Yeah. I'd I'd say maybe, but they've done that before in the past. And like this was actually on, I forget what they call the little quilt slide where they have the little little squares that have things on it. Like that was actually one of the squares that was taking up space on there. So it's like they could have not had that and had something else about the camera, you know, (laughs) Mm because that's that's really why people are buying the phone. Um, But it was on there. So I don't know. We'll be curious to see what they come up with uh, to do with this thing. So. Home Assistant is turning 10 years old uh, today, tomorrow. I don't know. Sometime soon. Gavin, you probably know exactly when. Uh, and they're also <laughs> introducing a new product called Home Assistant Green. It's priced at $99. It's a compact device. It simplifies the setup process. Uh, it features a preloaded 32 gigabyte eMMC storage with Home Assistant's platform. Uh, it includes four gigabytes of RAM. USB 2.0 slots, HDMI out, and micro D for expansion. Uh, so this is basically like the yellow, but a little smaller version. Doesn't have the fancier radios in it, right? With what I was reading, like they don't have the um, Zigbee, the Zigbee or Z-Wave, Z-Wave yeah. radios. Yeah. Yep. yep. So just kind of like a little bit le- cheaper in- entry to the Home Assistant ecosystem for ninety nine bucks. It might be the right price for a lot of people out there. So good for them, and and, and I guess happy birthday, Home Assistant. Yes, 10 years. I, I watched the um, 10 year anniversary stream. It was interesting because they went back with people that worked on it over the 10 years um, and they talked to them. You know, some of the people don't even work on it anymore, but they still had them. You know, they acknowledged all the people that trash talk them over the 10 years. Like, I think they give a shout out to Yousef, ah. you know, at some point, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a good stream. Um, great to see. And then, yeah, they have a new logo, um, which they announced. And then, yeah, the green, the green to me, though, um it's $99 it was a great price they had a, a thousand initial for order and people have already started reporting that they've gotten theirs in their hand but it comes with none of the radios like it has uh I don't think it, I don't even know if it even has wi-fi built in I can't remember if it had wi-fi or if it's just LAN connected but you're gonna have to have a zigbee z-wave controller matter controller etc cetera, etc cetera, which adds to the cost you're looking you know if you start adding up those controllers what another 50 to 100 bucks and if you want them all so you have to take that into consideration um if you already have a home assistant setup that you're happy with 
no reason to look at getting the green. This is more geared towards new people or people that want something better than what they have today. If you want to get it off an old pie, for example, get the green, right? You'll, you'll be happy. But I have mine running on Unraid. Works perfectly fine. I can give it all the resources I want and I'm happy with it. So I have to pass on this, but it, it's a good, it's good to see them releasing new hardware still. Yep. Yep. And it does not have Wi Fi because, quote, according to Paulson, uh, Paulus, because the backbone of your smart home should be used in Ethernet. So there you go. No Wi Fi. It, it's funny that he says that too, because that was a uh, Habitat's argument mm-hmm. for the longest time was that you do not want your hub on wi-fi you want it and it made sense because the amount of traffic you don't you don't want that bottleneck of wi-fi you want as fast as you can hardwired as fast reliability but the people complained so much about it that they eventually had to add wi-fi and it made people happy people just don't care about you know that type of stuff you know and then they'll add their wi-fi and it won't be reliable and they'll complain about that next right so yeah, it's interesting to see them say that, you know, Habitat said the same thing. Yeah, and if you want the want the Zigbee or the thread built in, you could just go with the Home Assistant Yellow, which has them built in, uh, but you have to buy the CM4 separately, the, the Raspberry Pi compute module uh, separately. So it's $124 for the Yellow, and plus I'm assuming $50 to $100 for the compute module, because I've been hard to find and everything like that. Same price, roughly. Yeah. So, I mean, you're definitely saving some money with the green kit if you don't need the other wireless protocols. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the Sky Connect thing, Ryan? Because if you needed to add that in. I think that was only like $20 when I yeah, bought it. Yeah, that was 20 something dollars. Super cheap. So for $120, $130, you'd be able to have pretty much yeah. the same thing. Oh, that's pretty it's good. That's a good entry level. Everything besides Z-Wave, but nobody cares about Z-Wave. Yeah. So. <laughs> and what I like about this kind of setup, though, is that you can choose which controller you want. You can go with Sonos or not Sonos, Sonoff or, you know, the other brands if you want for Zigbee. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you could choose the controller that you want. You could choose a Z-Wave 500, 700, 800 controller if you want, you know, and that gives you extra flexibility there, which I really like. Yeah, and it's probably probably easier for them, too, because they don't have to go through additional certifications and stuff. In, uh, in Freedom Dollars, the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 8 gigabyte is... $75. Is that the commute, compute module for, though? Um, that's you need the compute question. module specifically for the oh, yellow one. Oh, okay. And I think prices of those pies are now coming down a bit as they become more available. So it looks like they're becoming easier to get now. Yeah, that Raspberry Pi has been, was was basically like went away for, for the pandemic. It's impossible to find during the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, they were like $200. I mean, you could find them. It's, it's you can find the compute module now for $35. So that's not bad. So basically $200 for the yellow kit if you buy like a Zigbee or a Z-Wave hub at that point. And they, they announced earlier this year that they were back on target to restock everything. So all the pandemic and I guess before that, uh, supply shortages that were killing them stopped. So, yeah, I see right here, thirty dollars. Oh, there you go. It it is interesting to see this though, the Home Assistant Yellow, the Home Assistant Green, because when you think of Home Assistant, you you traditionally think of like a like a power user I th- setup. I was going to say blue, but okay. <laughs> well, I mean that's the next one. <laughs> That's going to come without Ethernet. Right. <laughs> um, but you just, you think of like power users that are using Home Assistant and everything. Um, you don't really think of like the average person buying one. Um, and I, I don't see the average person adopting Home Assistant until the UI gets better. But it's definitely way easier than it was, you know, even two or three years ago. So the stuff like this is going to help them. They are working on that UI because in the last update, they actually um, adjusted the onboarding process to make it cleaner and better for new users. So Ooh, they listen to our podcast. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, next they'll probably disable entities or add that feature that you were supposed to rec- um, ask for, where it could be like a easy mode, advanced mode, where it would enable entities and stuff like that. Maybe they're thinking and working on it, but they're making slow changes. It's month by month. We just need to make our own home tech version. Ooh, the home tech home assistant. That's right. Yeah. Home tech assistant. Home tech assistant. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we we could do that. And then we could just say, you know, you, you could tell it to do something and it, it'll respond like, yeah, I'm going to do that and uh, not release the show until the next Friday or something like that. I don't know. 
There's a way we can do that. I wish you could do like home tech, home assistant, edit the show for me. Well, if we bet our own hub, maybe it would. The sky's the limit. Exactly. Chat GBT can make it for us. That's right. All right. Well, let's let's move on here. Uh, also, happy birthday, uh, the home assistant. There. This sounds pretty cool. Ten years. I, I guess I was looking back at our 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 show shows that we did before, and way back like six years ago, um, we did like a DIY roundup, and um, yeah, I I did talk a little smack about YAML, but I you know. Home Assistant had <laughs> promised. The interface was nice. Well deserved. Jeez. I don't know. It it wasn't compelling then at all for me. It's a little bit more now because they've had a lot of work done on it and they all all they they have done people have done a lot of integrations with it, which is awesome. That is probably the best part of it is how much actually will integrate like stupid things like my power company. Somebody ripped off their API and like I can download my power bill into Home Assistant now. Like, why? I have no idea, but I can do it. And so I did it. Um, but my yeah. My toothbrush gets picked up every time <laughs> I turn it on to brush my teeth. Home Assistant's <laughs> like, hey, we just discovered a new device. I don't know why, but it's cool to see. It's it's it's, it's an interesting platform, and I, I really do hope they uh, – they were able to continue moving along and maybe, you know, another couple of years, they'll, they'll have the, the simplified interface that we're talking about where it's like, you know, I want the, uh, the everyday man mode or the, you know, super duper, like, give me all the events and everything mode. So we'll see. Two, I, I see two modes. One, one called, uh, TJ mode and the other one called Gavin mode. Yeah. There we go. Just like that. You know, that's the, yeah, that's your two options. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's uh, let's dive into this Amazon event. There was a there was a huge Amazon event. You know, we basically didn't record the show this week on um, on Tuesday like we normally do. We had to wait till Thursday because Amazon was going to have this event. We knew that they were going to come out with all this stuff. Right. That's exactly why we did this. Yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, that's why. How was Cleveland, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was dirty, but dirty. That's, I think that's just Cleveland. So. I, I thought it rocked, according to the song. The only song I know about Cleveland. Well, I mean, if you're Drew Carey, then I think it rocks, but... <laughs> Ohio. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amazon has done a ton of stuff. They basically, we'll start with the uh, kind of some bullet points here, and then we'll go through each one of the, the bigger things that kind of revolve around home technology. Uh, with the Alexa and Echo, they have upgraded basically and made Alexa AI powered, right? So they have a they're previewing a smarter, more conversational Alexa uh, powered by generative AI. So they've stuck in their own lang- large language model. Um, this new Alexa will enhance voice interactions, improve understanding of complex requests, and offer real more real-time information. Um, also adding several more features, including eye gaze mode for those with speech or mobility uh, disabilities. This is awesome. Uh, call translation for free real-time language translation and um, emergency assist for safety services. And then uh, Echo Frames are in ca- and they're doing smart glasses, which is strange, but there you go. Um, you can get some high-end fashion glasses and pop them on your eyes and walk around talking to Alexa all day, I guess. There you go. And then uh, the Echo, there's a new Echo Show 8. Uh, nice new upgrade. It's got a centered camera, improved sound with a, a adaptive content on the screen. So as you get closer, the, uh, the if you're far away, it has like maybe a picture, but if you get closer, it'll have like news events and that kind of thing. It'll, it'll change as you get, as it watches you walk around the room. It's kind of cool. Um, it's got new photo sharing capabilities. Um, Fire TV, uh, stick 4K, second gen, 30% more powerful, yay. Uh, there is a another Fire TV 4K Max, which does all the Dolby Vision HDR stuff. Um, and there's a Fire TV soundbar, which is a Bluetooth soundbar to, to get all that DTS and Dolby audio out as into your room. Um, Blink had a few updates too. I'm not going to cover these too much. It's just basically outdoor floodlight cameras, a Sync Module Pro, which... Um, is a hub to extend range capabilities. There's a battery expansion pack and I guess ring stick up cam pro. It was released as well. It has the 3d motion detection thing and like the aerial view of your home uh, radar thing that that's, that's been in those. Um, and then let's see, there's, there was a couple of announcements around like kids, uh, like the echo pop kid speaker and fire HD for kids. There's, there's a, they do a bunch of stuff to like make the ecosystem, 
available to kids where they can interact and not, you know, run across anything dangerous or something like that. So kind of, kind of cool, uh, that, that they do that. Um, but I, I think the bigger thing that kind of everybody has been talking about, at least in the smart home space is this new echo hub and it's a wall mountable, smart, smart home control panel, like a touchscreen powered by Alexa. It sports, um, all the Alexa devices. Uh, it's got a like a number of different ways that you can install this thing. I was kind of looking through the uh, listing on Amazon's website, and you can you can install it tabletop. Like it comes with its own stand. You can put it on the wall and plug it into a wall outlet using a USB three USB cable. Um, I, I you can also PoE power it, which is awesome. So like they mentioned that you can use Eero to PoE power, but like if you have a, any PoE switch or an injector you can hook it up that way so uh 180 dollars uh eight inch touchscreen doesn't have a camera but does have zigbee thread bluetooth le amazon sidewalk connectivity and uh it give, makes it a thread border router f- for matter yay you matter this week amazon i guess let's see uh just kind of going over some of the things here it's designed to be just the affordable approachable smart home controller uh, it's got a bunch of widgets. There's there's a video that uh, we have of it kind of being interacted with <laughs> and that we were laughing about kind of before the show. Gavin's not impressed. Gavin was shaking his head. Gavin, uh, we'll start with you. What do you what do you think about this thing? You like this? Are you going to get one? You're going to get a hundred eighty dollar Amazon? Echo? I'm, I'm going to actually wait for more people to get their hands on it so I can see more videos. But um, the hub is something that a lot of people want. A lot of people try to roll their own wall mounted like mm. touchscreen dashboard. And I think this is filling a huge gap. Um, uh, and it looks good, right? It looks like something that can work. Now on Twitter, like you saw Jennifer Tui. Tui. Yeah. Tui. Is that how you say it? I think so. She was posting videos of, you know, actually using it and the lag behind her using it was just driving me nuts. There's a slight lag and she loaded the cameras, the cameras, you know, by the time the cameras loaded, people assumed you're not home and they left. But anyway, right. <laughs> like it's, it was taking that long and I was just like, it can't be this bad. So I want to wait for others to get it before I um actually, uh, you know, invest in one. I want to, if it's that laggy, it's going to drive me nuts. It also crashed right? like, during the demo. Like, yeah, it crashed too, <laughs> but it will drive me nuts. And then, if you have a new product and it's already that laggy, you know, like next year, how much more laggier is it going to be when it gets the next version of uh, whatever Android flavor they're running? You know, like it, it's, I don't think it will get any better. So I'll wait and see. Um, but it is a great product. The, the POE was actually shocking. You yeah. know, I was actually surprised to see that, that they acknowledged that. Um, and I think the next generation of this might be even much better. But, you know, in, in regards to the lag, you guys said in the pro products, they have lag like this, too. Sometimes even worse. It's just more expensive lag. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Sad, sadder lag. Wow. I, that would just drive me nuts. I'm sorry. Yeah. Honestly, watching the video, I didn't think the majority of it's that bad, but definitely the, the crashing and stuff like that kind of hinders it a little bit. It, um, it, but I, it is like a day one thing, right? It's not even out yet. So right. like it could be running some pre-release software and there's like, oh yeah, there's a memory leak. We got to update that. So and, and realistically, nobody is like going through and like swiping around the stuff like that. They're walking up to it and pressing like three buttons. So I don't know. Not in my home. This is this is me explaining why somebody's two thousand dollar touchscreen doesn't work very well. So, <laughs> just my experience. Uh, yeah, m- most of the time this thing's just going to sit in your wall and listen to you talk. I mean, take take notes and uh, report up to to Big Papa there in the cloud, so you can get some uh, Papa Bezos. Yeah, Papa Bezos, so you can get you, some. You see. The one time a week my wife would actually use this, I want it to be the best experience ever, right? So, and I'm come. What are we talking sadly, about? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the the touch screen, the touch screen, HR, the touch screen, <laughs> the touch screen. That is right. <laughs> I'm gonna tell your wife you said this don't work that good. No, I said it, it should be the best experience. <laughs> wow, this is post show edits right here. Oh Greg man! Gave you a whole oh bunch. man! <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks like it. It looks like 
Uh, well, okay, so it is also not an in-wall touchscreen. It is an on-wall touchscreen. So it kind of sits off a little bit. Eight-inch touchscreen. Um, very similar to if you're familiar with the Control 4 products. They have a seven-inch and a 10-inch maybe touchscreen. It looks really good, though. I, I like what they've done here. Uh, it doesn't look bad. And uh, aside from the crashing and the stuttering, like... I think giving you so many different ways to install it, like you can do it tabletop, you can do it wall mount, you can POE wall mount, that kind if, of stuff. It, if I you think ignore the hit. usability of it, then it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think the tabletop adapter is an extra $30. It's is from it? a separate company, I believe. Yes. Ah, uh, boomer. Well, I, I think I think what uh, Gavin and I, I, I think what you and I are waiting on is basically this thing to be jailbroken so we can use it with other apps and like it's, yeah, it's, side load apps on it. Yeah, so... We'll see. Uh, I did get a $30. I forget what this is called. It's like an Amazon. It's a tablet. Is it called a fire tablet? Fire tablet. Yeah. Okay. So it's a 10 inch. Like a kid's one? No, no, it doesn't. It's just a regular fire tablet. Um, it was 30 bucks and I, I'm, it may have been on sale like for one of the holiday things or something, but I got it and I turned it on. I'm like, meh, this isn't. You know, this is weird. And then I, I learned that you could download this program and, and jailbreak it. And I it basically, it runs like Android now. And I can load any app I want onto it. And it I use it all the time for development or you know, just like if I need a quick uh, something, something I, I'm working on, I need to look at on a different screen or something, I'll use it for that. So like, yeah, if, if I can take that the $180 touchscreen and pop it on a wall or, or do, do something like that. That's, that's compelling. It that might be an actually interesting, interesting product. Yeah. Stuff like this makes me think that like Amazon is actually paying attention to what their customers are doing with their stuff though. Yes. Because I'm always seeing people like mount up tablets to their walls in like the most janky way possible. And so stuff like this, when, when they come out with this, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a reasonable product that people are going to actually buy. And if it works good, like nobody's going to do like the janky tablet on the wall thing anymore. They're just going to do this. Amazon is listening to us all. So, I mean, they, they are <laughs> oh, going to input. They're, listening. they're actually yes. able to use the information on like the NSA. So Exactly. Uh, but on wall, uh, on wall versus in wall, I think the on wall is a lot smarter because it, the the hole that you would cut in your wall to actually adapt this for use, um, is 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 going to be a lot smaller than if it was in wall because then you're talking an eight inch hole. And then like when this is deprecated or retired, or they change the format or change the bezel size or whatever, and the size changes just a tiny bit, you don't have a giant hole that mm -hmm. you know the new one doesn't fit into. Um, ask me how I know and how many control four touch panels I installed in wall over the years. And the, the holes for those got a lot smaller. Like they started, they started with like back boxes that were like this big and they started shrinking down. And as they did that, like you had to get these adapter plates and kind of put them on and then you always had to go with the bigger tablet because you couldn't go like from a seven inch tablet to the four inch tablet then back it just that didn't work so um this is a smarter way of doing it i'm glad to see somebody in kind of the diy space is getting hold of this and i will be even happier to see if it gets jailbroken and uh it gets to be used in, for other smart things i think if it does i think they're going to sell a ton of them to a lot of uh <clears throat> control four dealers who are not really happy with the uh t4 touchscreens that have been out for a couple of years now they don't run very well yeah probably be a lot of these installed <laughs> It's going to be a very successful product, not for Amazon, but, uh, but you know, the, the, they'll, they'll just be running a, t a control four app on it. I don't know. Cause you can use, you can use a uh, Amazon Alexa through control four and just yell at your touchscreen on the wall and kind of keep it running that way. The stuttering will be the same, but my profit margins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, we should, we should move on. Uh, let's see, uh, uh map view. Um, we talked about this a little bit before the show. It is your standard floor plan map view thing with your devices placed around the house or whatever. There's a little bit of more interesting version of this with Amazon. Instead of like drawing a map or drawing the weird shape of your house, you can walk around with a LiDAR enabled phone, which is pretty much iPhones. Uh, and it will digitally import or create the floor plan of your house. Um, I guess, you know, you could do this uh, a couple of <laughs> the, 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 Amazon wants to know what's in your house. And, and this is this is how they're going <laughs> to do it, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it, it's pretty interesting that you can you can do this. I, I'm not a fan of the floor plan layout control thing. I think if if you've done this, then 
I, I, th- I think it's kind of a fail as far as a user interface because it doesn't, that mental, mo- that mental mode works for some people, but it doesn't work for people who can't read maps or understand floor plans, which is a lot of people, believe it or not. So people will like this though. I, it's, it's a popular option for other people who do like map based interfaces. So, um, good for Amazon for kind of putting this together and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're, we're, I see TJ laughing. We talked about this before the show as well. TJ is a map, a, a map view. What do you call it? In favor of the map view, I guess. Well, it, well, it's funny that you say that though, because I can't read a map to save my life. <laughs> but for some reason, the map view of the home automation system makes the most sense to me. But mainly because then I don't have to like think of a user interface that makes sense. And so, to like, I've never done a map interface though. So I guess maybe I'm just missing that part. But I mean, to me, it seems like it would make the most sense. My problem with map reading usually comes with directions, and I don't need to know directions to operate my house. So maybe that would be the difference. I don't know. I think the map view kind of breaks down when you start to have too many devices, mm. right? Like if you just have lights and you're in the room and you're just clicking on the lights, that's basic stuff. But when you, you start having a room with many devices in it, multiple devices in it, Your device types, cameras, yeah, lights, TV, exactly. AV. I feel like, would, I feel like wouldn't that, the, wouldn't the map view be good for just like a slimmed down version of like an interface though? Like just your lights or your fans or something like that. Not like temperature sensors and cameras and whatever else. What's wrong with the buttons, man? Just have a button. Isn't that what slimmer is on a button? Fill up the screen. I just want to look at it. I just want to look at something. I got a small house. It can fit on my phone. Maybe put a picture of a beach behind it or something. Then Maybe you guys just have too big of houses. I don't know. <laughs> my house is tiny. <laughs> yeah. I just zoom in on my map more. <laughs> we can't all just live in mansions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's better. It's got to be better with the home assistant interface I have, which is literally just check boxes everywhere. So anything's better than that, I guess. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah, uh, mine's just mine's check boxes in my uh, my utility bills now, um, and and my graphs. Can't forget my graphs. In your printer, come on. Yeah, it's there. Paper. I don't know how many how many sheets of paper are printed? I don't know. It, it, it it's an interesting thing. Some people like this. Some people want. I think this is probably one of those things that they're throwing against the wall to see what sticks or they're using it for other reasons, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. No, Amazon never does that. <laughs> no. They always release very polished, ready to go products. Yeah. Yeah. We clearly from the video, you can see that. Um, so one of the bigger things we kind of briefly touched on at the beginning when I was going through the bullet points was Amazon introducing the upgrade to Alexa and basically giving it, access to a large language model, kind of like what you have seen with ChatGPT, gives it uh, new conversational abilities. Uh, the large language model is optimized for voice and aims to deliver more seamless experience. It eliminates the need to repeat commands and adjust the tone and emotion contextually and tolerates speech pauses. That's kind of nice. Um, it will be connected to countless real world devices, uh, enabling complex multi-step commands. So that's this is also another key thing here um and i guess during the live demo it had a few hiccups <laughs> not not unlike the exact same feature that josh ai announced and then i guess adam and richard were talking about on a show like they also had hiccups during their demo so i guess hiccups go around man it's a new new thing um anyway it, this is really cool to see mostly because it, you know we've talked about on the show here before that the yelling a command into the air with with all of the home assistant things we have not home ass- like voice assistant i guess uh things we have these days is kind of like typing in a command prompt on your computer from the dos days and if you get it right it works but if it doesn't understand you or it's too loud or there's something else or you say the wrong thing or it decides that your curtains aren't called curtains they're called shades today it's not going to work these large language models are going to help uh, eliminate that awkwardness. And we'll, we'll, over time, we'll be able to get what they're talking about here, where these commands will actually execute what you want based on kind of what you said. And and that, that'll be great. I, I think this is, this is a big step forward for Amazon in this case. Uh, and, you know, Josh AI dem- demonstrated a very similar feature at CDI and everybody was excited about that. So I'm excited to see this come to voice assistants in general because they were just too awkward to tell. I mean, they, they just plain are to me, just too awkward to talk to and tell them to do basic things. So Ga- Gavin, I see you shaking your head. What do you think about this? I think it's cool. First thing, um, Jimmy over on 
Twitter, automated house on Instagram, actually. He, he pointed out that you can create, uh, routines now using just your voice, um, with that. And routines are also coming to the ring app. That's really cool. I mean, Josh AI had that feature. I guess Amazon is now adding that feature, but that's a enhanced thing. But in terms of the generative AI stuff, you know, like, I like the Amazon lady is kind of like that person you don't want to continue a conversation with, right? You just want to tell you something <laughs> and walk away. And they've turned her into that person that just wants to talk to you. And it actually, you know, you're wrong. It's making it more awkward because now I'm going to be standing there saying, how can I get out of this conversation? Like, <laughs> you know, like how can I end this, but not be rude with her, you know, because, you know, the robots will come to take over in the future, you know? So all their demos, I was like, man, she is too chatty in this demo. <laughs> and the worst part was, is like, when you're, at, the worst part is at night when you're trying to give it a command and you're just like, hey, just turn off the lights quickly, you know, and you don't want to wake up the whole house. She's going to start a conversation at full volume, one o'clock in the morning and wake up the whole house. You're going to be like, hey, just shut up. You know, that's, you know, I don't know. I don't want to have a conversation with that, with, with my Alexa. I just wanted to, do what I say and leave me alone, right? Um, if I ask you a question, yeah, I come with better answers, which is looking good, right? Like if she comes with better, more intuitive answers, but don't continue the conversation. I don't like, I honestly don't like that, you know? Yeah, there, there's many ways they could do this wrong. And <laughs> Amazon has started to make Alexa do things wrong. Yes. Uh, hopefully they won't continue down that path. Um you know, they listen to the show, I'm sure, and take our advice. So, <laughs> Well, and at this point, we already read the articles, what was it, a year ago or six months ago, I don't even know, where user engagement for these devices was pretty low already. And so, I mean, at this point, like, I don't know if they can necessarily kill it without just, like, stopping development on it altogether. Mm. And so maybe stuff like this will actually make people engage with it and actually use it. Because you have to realize, too, that us three, we're, we're not really the target audience. It's the, the average person who maybe does want a little bit more out of it. And, and if it can tell it tips or tell you tips or, or whatever other tidbit information, maybe people like that. I don't know. I'm not a lay person. I wouldn't know. You in your fancy house with your Josh AI set up. Yeah? <laughs> I'm so lucky. Don't, don't ruin it. Gosh. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the input side of this, I, I'm really, I'm really liking like the input, like saying a command or multiple commands and having it be able to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I feel awesome. like it's kind of a, ne a necessity at this point. Right. Right. I mean, we've been living with this like contrived, like tell this thing to do this. And I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't appeal to me very much. You just you just made me think of something. I hope they enhance the multi command um feature because right now you can say, you know, turn off the lights in this room and turn off the lights in this room. And you can I think you can only do two at a time, right? But it would be nice if I could say turn off the lights in this room and the pool pump and this and that and it would know to turn those all off. Right. Right. And I don't have to keep telling it turn off this and open these and do this, right? So I hope they improve that. But it's good to see that they're adding Adding a lot of attention to this stuff. And I wish like Apple did this type of thing and enhanced Siri oh, no, with no. it too, right? <laughs> Come <You> on. Know? <laughs> they never will. Yeah, Siri is as good as it. I mean, it's the best thing ever. Like, uh, I don't I don't really understand what they're thinking with Siri. Like, I, it, I don't yeah, know. it's pretty weird. I think they don't know what they do. And maybe they just like let it get so bad. They just, they don't want to just like Alexa. They're like, it's losing money and we just want to kill it, but we're just, just going to let it just keep getting worse and worse. I think maybe they release these, uh, Siri products, like the home pods and they're just like, Oh damn, somebody actually bought it. You know, like, I think they're more shocked at who, <laughs> who buys it. Oh, they're still using it. Wow. <laughs> you think maybe they're just like stuck in Siri at this point? Like they like they just want to do something different, like just come out with a new version, but they're just not going to. They're just like, eh, I've already got this one. We can't really do anything with it. So it can't have it can't get any worse. <laughs> I mean, it could, but it can't really well, get any worse. It definitely could. It, it, I mean, it's good for basic stuff. Yeah, for the basic stuff yeah, that I want, yeah. like turn on the light, it turns on the light. Yes. And that's really all. Uh, it doesn't respond back. It doesn't tell me, oh, by the way, there's three other lights in this room. Do you want me to? <laughs> yes. No, it doesn't, doesn't do that. Like, um, one of your lights is end of life. Do you want to replace it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, your printer is low on toner by the way you could order it here would you like you to <laughs> order, order a brand new printer for half yeah. the cost of the toner yeah yeah no it, it's it's 
I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. I, I'm sh- I know that they're probably working on. There's been rumors that Apple's been working on something. Yes. So for at least ten years now. So they they seem like a company where they get distracted on like some new pretty project and all the like they're like everybody has to work on this like everybody and it's like well wait a minute like maintain maintain stuff yeah it's part of the product cost anyway uh, let, let's move on off this stuff uh, th- I guess there is one more thing there was an emergency assist thing that came up that looks kind of cool uh, cost six dollars a month six dollars a month or 60 bucks a year yep. so yeah uh, it's basically what is this the help I fall and I can't get up thing for your echo <laughs> which is nice genius yeah and then uh, kind of big news in the Eero side of things there's the Eero Max 7 which has 10 gigabit ethernet seeds so you get that 10g for your 10g xfinity connection now Ooh, right this is what gavin needs yeah yeah for the canadian that ubiquity stuff and i'm happy with my unify stuff i'm happy i can't complain <laughs> my printer's been working so i'm happy you could complain if you bought this though for 1700 dollars, mm-hmm, gavin mm-hmm. for a three pack because wow. i know you got a mansion so you're you're at least going to need the three pack one of them is 600 dollars, i guess so Ideal for large homes, high demand networks. Eero 7 Max supports 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz. So I guess this is, is this actually using Wi Fi 7? I really. It's Wi Fi 7, yeah. I mean, it, it is, but Wi Fi 7 isn't like a real standard. So yeah. it uses Wi Fi 7, but that's not a real thing. So. But they did future proof the, themselves with this device. So it, it has technology that's going to last a while. But you. you you're looking at the cost now. That and it's price like, it better, yeah. Yeah, that for that <laughs> price now, you know, if you're paying eighteen hundred bucks for a three pack, when did we get to this point? You know, like you get to this point when you when you start demanding ten gigabit, 10 gigabit internet. Like I, I think that we're true. gonna be at like Wi Fi six for a while because Wi Fi six is so cheap right now and six E as well. Like now that you see um, the iPhone has come out with six E built in, I guess the fifth. I know the 15 pros have it. The, the, I'm not sure if the, like the regular phones have it as well, but mm, not sure. Yeah. Now, now that they have six E people will be like, well, why can't I get the E six E and six E was just for like bridging stuff. It really wasn't for like connecting a device to it. So, um, but it, it'll get you a little bit faster if that's what you want. You'll, you'll be able to look at your speed test and say, Oh, my phone's slightly faster than it was yesterday. Um, I, I don't know this this thing like the Wi-Fi seven significantly faster, but everything else in your network has to be upgraded. The pipe coming into the house has to be bigger. The pipes around the house are going to have to be a lot bigger, and that's that's very difficult right now. So, uh, and all the electronics <laughs> have to be upgraded. So, uh, it's cutting edge, it's bleeding edge. I don't I don't suspect they'll be like six hundred dollars for years, but like at some point you're going to have to upgrade everything in the house to, you know, a five or 10 gig network. Like it's, that's going to be expensive because it's not, it's not something you're doing over category cable most of the time now. Like you're talking fiber to get those back ends put in. Right. So, but at least with the 10 gig ports, right. If you're to run it into a switch, you got from there to the switch 10 gig. And then even if everybody else is one gig, they're sharing that 10 gig pipe out if anything. Right. So yeah, in theory, it, it will theory. help. It will yeah. help a bit. Right. I don't know. Like as soon as, as soon as people realize that their homes don't need to be data centers, I guess it would be in a better place. But like, I, I don't know, man, I, I, I move a lot of stuff around like in and out of the house, but not that much inside where like a 10 gig connection is going to make much sense. So, all right, well, you guys convinced me I'm going to buy one. So I'll let you know when I get it. <laughs> Might actually get one to try it out. It's, I find it interesting. It says one will cover 2,500 square feet. I mean, that's a pretty good distance. You got to put it right in the middle of the house, though. That's right. You won't have to give your neighbors any of that free Wi-Fi 7. Not at that mm-hmm. price. Definitely, definitely not the one that yelled at me. And more than likely, if you get one of these, you'll have yet another Matter Network in your house. Because <laughs> no, those Matter Networks don't all come together as one. You're going to have separate Matter Networks for each device you have. Oh, man. Well, it's like Pokemon. You got to catch them all. <laughs> exactly, exactly if you don't if you don't have 20 matter networks in your house are you even doing home automation right exactly there you go done well i uh, well speaking of matter i mean we'll talk about philips hue is i uh, get finally rolling out of that matter supporter so they're mattering this week thanks philips hue uh according to nine to five mac they're starting to get uh rumors here that matter sports which was promised by march of this year is finally being rolled out and as a as a delay as a delayed product rollout i guess but you know I, i'm not gonna blame phillips for not being like crazy about it like it, 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 it if it gets out like that's fine like 
they've done it. They've done, they've got a lot of devices out there. That they're going to have to make compatibility for There's, they're a big company that has done like a lot of people have these Philips U lights in their house, right? Like it's not just a few, a few products they're going to have to worry about updating. So take your time. And I, I guess they did. And now uh, they matter this week. So there's another matter network in your house. The Philips Mew, Hue matter network <laughs> is going to be in your house. And you have one of these devices. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. You, you guys matter. This is awesome. Yay. It's a, uh... Pretty pretty ironic because on the forums right now, and, and by forums, I mean the home automation subreddit, uh, they're reporting that Philips Hue is going to start requiring accounts. And so you've been able to set up and use Philips Hue devices without an account, uh, but now they're they're moving to account only. So that has a lot of users a little upset right now. So like for their Bluetooth devices, I guess, like the... I think I think if you wanted to just use it locally, there was no account requirements. Hmm. Um, so even with the non Bluetooth devices, like you could have a hub and the lights and everything like that, and it, you could just set it up to work, and you didn't need an account for that. Interesting. Which so what people were doing is they were setting that up, and then they were using Home Assistant or whatever their hub of choice was to talk locally to it, and then that's how they were controlling it. But now I th- there it looks like they're starting to transition to an account. Okay, I guess that makes sense because. I- I can't, I don't think that I have made an account. Oh, there's new terms of service. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Accept those. There you go. Yeah. Somebody else is complaining because they, they sent the terms of service, like as they're trying to turn off their bedroom lights or something at nighttime and they couldn't like go back to it or something. I don't know. Like anybody reads the term of service. Just accept, move on. Come on. You got to turn your lights off. Yeah. There's a little notification at the top of the app now saying that, uh, that they're going to have to have one, I guess. I, I guess, yeah. I What I did was I plugged this thing in, I tapped the top button and then paired the lights with it. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't have an account. Hmm. Look at that. But now you do. Not yet. Well, you'll, you'll have to. Actually, I don't think I have. You'll, you'll be like, oh, why can't I control my lights? What the heck? I think I, I took away, I, I've taken all the fuel few lights out. I don't think I have any more left. I had one in a chandelier in the in the in the over the dining room table because it like party times we would turn it like for halloween turn it into a big like orange it was a big white ikea round thing so i could turn it to a pumpkin or I could just, like it would actually react fairly well to the uh zigbee like i could throw a ton of zigbee stuff to it i could make it like when somebody rang the doorbell it would flash like lightning so like just change the colors a bunch of times real fast it would actually do that it was actually kind of impressive but yeah, I, 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 I don't think we're, I have any left in the house anywhere. I don't have any of those lamps anywhere. Hmm. All right. Well, you don't have to worry about the account. No, then. Just toss the hub. <laughs> Good for you. Just throw it away. Yeah, I'll put it in the, uh, the graveyard over there, I guess. Uh, well, everybody on the forum said they're going to stop buying them. So just put in, go ahead and put it in your graveyard. I'm already ahead of the game. Wait a couple years. I already stopped buying them years ago. <laughs> Evidently started losing the light bulbs too. Cause I can't, I don't even know what I did with the light bulb at this point. <laughs> it probably went out with the chandelier. Whoops. Oh, I have well. a feeling this is just another overreaction. Really? A rumor or something <laughs> like that, that people no. are just going to go nuts over. And then Hugh's going to have to release a statement saying, oh, we've listened to you. We're not adding the account, even though it was still going to work locally anyways. Um, Wirecutter's going to say, yeah. we're not going to recommend them anymore. Exactly. You see where this is terms. all going. You know, <laughs> It'll be on the Wall Street Journal. 15 you know. hit pieces over The Verge because they have nothing else to write about. Yeah. New York Times, The Daily is going to write an article, do a <laughs> yeah. podcast episode about it. End of the company right there. <laughs> what happened to Signify? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was fun. All the links and topics we discussed tonight can be found over in our show notes at hometech.fm slash 452. All right. We're moving on here. We've got some, uh, we've got a pick of the week. Uh, TJ, I think you found this thing. It is picture of one of those mechanized like underground carport things. And um, the caption is automation gone wrong. Forgot to add the check to see if a car is present sensor on top before lifting. And I guess there's, there was a Jeep that was parked on top of this car lift and it was raised up into the, what looks to be the ceiling (laughs) or the roof, or I guess the underside of a concrete building as someone was trying to get their, uh, we determine what this is, a Honda Civic or something out. Mm-hmm. So, like, the thing is, like, stuck halfway because the Jeep prevented the uh, lift from lifting completely out of the ground. And, like, yeah, I, I don't really see how this happened. This seems like a major safety issue. But there we are. <laughs> Could you imagine if there was, like, a person on Yeah, this? like, that That would be 
awful. And what I don't understand is that like there's there's usually built in safety mechanisms for like all these devices, you know, and, and for somebody that maybe hasn't seen one of these, it's, it's basically just a glorified car lift. But you would think that it's just the garage doors have like an eye on it to make sure that if something's in front of the door, it doesn't like shut on you or anything like that. You would think by from the factory, this thing would have some kind of safety mechanism to prevent this exact thing. So to me, it, it would feel like somebody removed that. And this is what you get when you remove safety. <laughs> it was added for a reason. Yeah. I, I, you would think that it would just burn out the motor too. Like, I guess it has to be a good enough motor to lift a car and maybe two, maybe they, they do have a legitimate design reason to lift two cars, you know, like maybe there, if there was clearance above the thing, but at some point you would think the motor would have burned out, not the, at the point where half the Jeep cabin is like crushed, <laughs> crushed down into, uh, in, into the, the seating. I mean, that's, that's wild. Like that it was able to like, sh- it looks like it sheared off the back part of it. I mean, it is a Jeep. It's not, there's not much on top other than like maybe a roll bar to prevent it from going any further up. So I don't know. somebody's insurance is not going to be happy with them. Nope. 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 Gavin, what do you have? Do you have anything like this in Canada? Do you guys have these things? Um, I I had a buddy that had one in his garage because he would park his Corvette on top and oh, drive yeah, his other yeah. car. You know, he had a tall enough garage for that. But I've never seen one like this, and I wouldn't be surprised if this person actually built it themselves somehow. You know, and they forgot to think about this themselves <laughs> because <they're, laughs> any any legit company will have multiple safeties on it to stop this from happening. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is like an outdoor version of like what you would put in your garage. They had one of those. Yeah. Do you guys see it? It was at the show. There was like a car lift at Cedia. Yes. Yes, I saw it. Like it. Yeah. Fancy car in it. I'm like, it was one of these actually that you could drive on top. So, um, not not this brand. It looked a lot nicer. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> this, this would not be good advertising. Yeah, yeah. This, 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 this one looks like it was installed, you know, a few years back. Uh, it's not, a, not a new model. Anyway, funny picture, I guess. Not for the guy who owns the Jeep, but I wonder, wonder what covers that. Maybe homeowners insurance covers that. Hmm, probably. Yeah. Hope, well, and the only thing I could think of was like, hopefully your building isn't damaged because that would be way worse than a Jeep being damaged. Yeah, like if it. It looks like structural like the damage took, or something yeah. like that. It looks like the building's fine. Like, it, I mean, it literally sheared the top off the Jeep there. That's wild. Well, this person isn't part of the home assistant group anymore. So either they were lying about this or they got super made fun of and did not want to be part of the group anymore. Uh, well, that's that's what happens over those home assistant groups. <laughs> They're very, uh, very rude over there. <laughs> Well, if it's a Photoshop, it's a pretty good one. I like it. Anyway, if you have any feedback, <laughs> comments, questions, Photoshops of the week, uh, great ideas for show, give us a shout. Our email address is feedback at hometech.fm, or you can visit uh, hometech.fm slash feedback and fill out the online form. Uh, I'm not even sure what the last week has entailed for me. I don't know that I've had any. I, I guess I wasn't here. That's probably why. Uh, but I don't have any product project updates. I, I have... I have a bunch of stuff that I have to do related with work. So I'm trying to like put together a video system here behind me, um, which is kind of why everything's out of sorts. But that's that's only the only project I have going on right now. Gavin, you may have been busier. What what, what have you been up to? Uh, yeah, I've been busy. I picked up a few of the SwitchBot Curtain 3s. Um, you know, they're highly rated. Everyone seems to love them. You know, all the YouTubers were showing them off. And I was like, I had a set of curtains that I, I needed some more, um, controllers for. So I decided to grab a pair. I gave my quick review on Mastodon of what I thought of them. And, you know, just to summarize it, everyone talks about how quiet they are in normal mode, though. I also have the Aquara ones. They're actually louder than the choir ones, right? In normal mode, right? Which was actually shocking because, you know, everything about them was about how quiet they are. It says quiet. Yeah. It's yeah. Right there in the box. Well, nope. To get the quiet, you actually have to put it in quiet mode, right? And you can only use quiet mode with their app. And what quiet mode does is just make them go slower. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like instead of, you know, taking. 10 seconds to close your blinds. They close your blinds over like a minute. It goes really slow to the point you can't even see it or you can't hear it. And I'm like, okay, I see what they did. They just slowed them down. Now they're quieter because they're moving much quieter. 
Um, so it does what it does. But the, the one gripe is that if you integrate these with anything, you have to, you can't use the quiet mode with home assistant <laughs> or anything else, or you can add them to matter to any device, but I don't think you can use the quiet mode. If you use it matter, like in home kit or something, it has to be with their app and it has to be scheduled. It's really weird. I wish they could just give you a button that says close quietly, you know, and then just mm-hmm. let it creep close. Like why can't there's stuff like that just drives me nuts, but I guess they want you to use their app. But even in their app to use it, you had to actually schedule it. So you had to say, close it one minute from now in quiet mode. And then you had to wait a minute and then it would close in quiet. Mode. <laughs> uh, I guess they re- the quiet modes made for, you know, when you have it on a schedule to wake up in the mornings. Like so it doesn't schedules. wake up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, they, you would, they don't expect you to use quiet mode to close it like right now. If you want to close close it loud as possible as fast as possible but they, <laughs> does it possibly like drain the battery or something too when it's doing i think i think it uses a mode? little bit more battery when it's quiet mode Man. stuff like that so you know in terms of sound though regular mode it's all right but they work well um you know and, and the other thing is they're bluetooth right so if you're integrate when you're using the hub it communicates from the hub bluetooth if you're using you know any integration it's going to go through the hub bluetooth to the device um if you're using your phone well your phone connects directly to them so it's much faster but i found once you're using the hub they respond a lot slower so like if you you know set up some automation where you double click your light switch like i do in my rooms to close the blinds you double click and you wait a few seconds and that finally seems to kick in. You know, you almost think like it's not working to a point. Whereas with the Aquara, they're Zigbee. So I get almost instant response when I do some automation with them. So honestly, if I had to buy another set, I just go with the Aquara ones. I, I like them a lot better. They don't have the solar charging, but you know what? My batteries in those, I can't remember last time. I haven't charged them since I installed them late last year. So, I mean, the batteries last. Um, and when I do have to charge them, you know, I'll just plug them into the USB C and let them go and charge, and you'll be good. So, th- that's one thing I got to play. It's my honest review. It's not, I'm not being sponsored. I wasn't sent a free pair. I, was, I bought these myself. That's my honest review and how I feel about it. And, you know, you may love yours. Uh, you know, I don't mind. Right. The other thing, um, when we were, so other thing I just wanted to touch on is while we were in Cedia in Denver over there, right? I had some house sitters by the home. So this was very interesting because this was the first time I had house sitters in the house in my smart home, right? So it was kind of like, well, what do I have to worry about with them, right? Like, so we walked them around the house. We showed them how various things worked. I kind of had to explain to them, like, Certain times of the day, you may see things move, like blinds go up and lights come on and stuff like that, but it's all automatic. Don't get scared, you know, <laughs> like the evening time, it's going to go into evening mode, you know, morning time, you'll see it go into morning mode. But if you want, the way I have my smart home set up is there's manual controls for everything still. So all my light switches are still physical switches. So if they want to turn on the light, they don't need to load an app. I didn't, I don't have to give them an app. Everything's still controllable. Um, it was funny to see, like, when I came back, we were sitting around and they were actually using the Alexa, you know, because I told them, you know, while we're away, you can use the pool and stuff. And they learned how to ask her what the temperature in the pool is and to turn <laughs> off and on the pump and stuff like that. <laughs> and it was kind of interesting how quickly they picked that up. Right. You know, I just gave them basic examples with that and they just tried things out and they were having fun with it. Right. Um, so you know, I was kind of happy, you know, they did message me and they're like, did you adjust something? And they're like, the things are moving and we weren't sure. And I was like, <laughs> it's called evening My time. House is alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was like, it's evening time. The only other thing we did was we pointed out where cameras were. And they're like, I, I took all the inside cameras out. We use those to watch the dog. Right. And I just said, there's no cameras inside, but outdoors, you know, like we have cameras here just in case, you know, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to make it known. So, you know, they, they, they appreciated that, but you know they were impressed though they were like this is one of the smartest houses you know like we've seen and that they 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 were impressed at how well things work they had no issues um i did have a power outage one day which kind of like um messed up my home assistant but i was able to like remotely go into my unraid and reboot the whole home assistant instance and everything came back online so it was 
kind of cool. I got to work on my battery backup uh, plan a bit more. Um, something failed me there. But other than that, they were happy, you know, and, you know, I was proud of that. You know, it was a proud moment. My smart home, you know, people like my smart home setup. That's funny. Yeah. I, it reminds me I need to update my home, home assistant. I guess there's a core update to do. Oh, there's probably been uh, five since yeah. you last looked at it. Probably. What yeah. am I on? What am I on? Hey, I'm on 8.3. So it's on 9.2. Yeah. Probably should do that. Oh, oh. So far behind. Yeah. Because uh, Home Assistant 2023.9 released this month. And it's a pretty good update for people. Um, two of the key things in in it I found were um, they updated some of the info, more, more of the info dialogues, making things prettier. So like um, the thermostat dialogue got a lot of love. It looks really nice, I found. So I actually, I use the stock dialogue now for, I, I try to mo move my cards back to stock as much as I can. Um, it's just one less thing to update. So I, that's one I've moved back. And then another one I liked, um, is they added, uh, template sensors. So if you're a big template person, you don't have to go into the, the config files and edit the YAML in there anymore. You can just through the GUI, create a template sensor and add your YAML in there and work with it in a GUI. So that was a pretty nice, cause I've been trying to migrate a lot of my code out of the YAML files and more into the GUI and. Those to me were the two big updates, but it's always good to keep your uh, home assistant up to date. I always recommend people just keep it up to date because it makes updating it in the future much, much easier doing incremental updates. And Seth, there's one in here for you, a lawnmower update. Whoa, what? You can integrate your lawnmower in with, with home assistant. Oh yeah. They added the new mower. Yes. Just my, my QT or MQTT, but yeah. I th I'm pretty sure I've I've seen. Uh, I think mine is uh, one of those. What is it? It's called Tuya. I'm pretty sure it's a Tuya uh, API that it that it kind of integrates with. Ooh, um, that means you can hack it then, probably. Maybe I don't know. There's like you have to go and register with Tuya and get a, a developer key. I just haven't ever. It was more work than I honestly wanted to deal with. So it'd be interesting if there is a, a lawnmower integration that I can. I can put I could put the clippy up there on the on the big screen and there you go. tap and he off off he goes. One day I'll get a lawnmower. I'm still like I'm still suggesting it at least once a week. Every time I cut the lawn, I look at the prices. Well, just let me know when you want help, Gavin. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we'll got dealer pricing maybe. <laughs> mm, no, I just meant convincing the wife. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm, really good, I'm really good at that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, you thought you meant come over and mow. Like, no, like, no, you need help. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, anytime, buddy. Anytime you want to come to Canada, mow my lawn. That's great. You know, you're. I'll let you. Um, you have time off during the winter months. That's fine. You don't have to come up during that time. Oh, perfect. Just let you know. Okay, great. And one other thing I just wanted to mention, if you're a Habitat user, you know, 2.3.6 was released and that's a big update. Um, again, it's worth it to update. Lots of new devices and device features were added. Um, improved HomeKit support now. It's no longer considered beta, so that's a good thing. Um, they added things like AirPlay TTS support, which is actually kind of cool, and a lot of bug fixes. So get up to date, enjoy the new features. That's for Habitat too. I just noticed that when we were talking about um, your shades there and and how they operate, like I'm like, oh yeah, I have the Aquara thing too. I have the lock over here, uh, and I, I I realized that I only interact with it through the HomeKit integration, and I never open the app. And I did, and there's a firmware update there too. There's improved performance of the Home Key, which is the first thing, and then improve the periodic password function. Don't know what that is solve the issue of the fast power consumption. And then uh, this is perhaps my favorite one. Number five, solve other known problems to improve the stability of work. <laughs> so, some, some slight translation issues with their release notes, but you know what? It's 27% uh, complete and uh, updating now. So that sounds complain. like every like iOS app update, you know, <laughs> fixes new fixes bugs. Adds new features. We periodically update our apps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a popular one. Yeah. Copy and paste. Yeah. I, they're not supposed to do that. Some of them like Slack or whatever. You read them in there. They're, they have fun with theirs. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a bummer to like see.
the boring ones come through. But yeah, this one, this one, evidently there is a uh, performance with the home key, which I, I use quite a bit. So if it can unlock faster or, or be better, I've never actually had it miss on using home key with the watch or the phones or anything like that. So if it can go faster or be better, then that's great. I'm updating 50% done. It has to do it by Bluetooth because I don't have a hub, but there we go. Cool, man. And so, um, you know, I kind of may have spoiled a little bit, but TJ, what have you been doing around your house for projects these days? Well, I've only got one fun technology thing going on. I got a lot of house projects going on at the moment, though. The new fun technology thing, though, is I got signed up as a dealer for Josh AI. Yay! But not only did you sign up as a dealer, you also um, bought a bunch of equipment, because you kind of have to. Well, that's that's, that's a requirement. You're you're waiting on this parade, like, you know, like, (laughs) stop rooting it for us. You have to. All right, so so just so you know, like, Gavin, if you sign up as a dealer, that just means you get to place an opening order. (laughs) I want to hear from Literally anything. (laughs) Yeah, and it's crazy how much companies want. I'm not going to tell you how much I had to spend with Josh, but it, it wasn't that much in the grand scheme of things compared to, like, Crush Drum. Yeah. Um which that one was crazy but um so now i have i'm in the possession of the core uh what is it two core nanos uh, or two of the nanos two of the micros and then the the actual hub um and so i i've got that in possession now i did the initial training today and so whenever you do the initial training, you have to contact them and, and get access to actually set up your demo devices. And I think that's so you don't have to pay any of the, the ongoing fees or anything like that. Um, they basically add it as a demo device under your account. And so I did the initial training. Everything's good there. Just waiting to get added. And then this weekend, I'll probably actually work on getting all of the Josh AI stuff installed. So altogether, I have four actual microphones. And so I'll have to get a couple more to like really fill in the rest of the house. Um, But the problem I have right now is that I pretty much use all consumer gear in my house. And so I'm using Home Assistant with Z-Wave and Zigbee switches and a bunch of temperature sensors and Flume and and whatever else. Um, And Josh AI integrates with some stuff like my Sonos, uh, but it doesn't really integrate with Home Assistant. Um, and so the, the solution that I have for that is that I, I'm an Elan dealer, and so I can get an Elan uh, controller. Um, and then there's another company called Innovo that actually makes a home assistant integration. And so it's like $100 for the driver. Um, it talks to a home assistant, either their little magic cube that actually that you buy from them. It's like $100. Um, the newest one actually has Zigbee and Z-Wave built into it. I don't know how much that one is. Uh, but that way, like Home Assistant runs on this little cube, you connect it to a lawn, and then you can control anything that you have control with uh, through Home Assistant through a lawn. And so basically, I'll have three pieces to make the Josh AI work. Um, but in like a typical consumer house, I'll have Lutron and, and whatever else. So that won't be a problem for the majority of them. Um, so I'm working on getting the, the, the Home Assistant working through a lawn at the moment. Um, and then hopefully this weekend I'll get access to actually set up the demo equipment and I'll start installing it and, and seeing how that is. Nice. I'm so jealous. Yeah. And honestly, like I know you, you, you can like look at specs all day long and you can see these like things in person, but it's like when you actually like hold the nano, it is so freaking tiny. Like it, you really could blend that in anywhere. And like one of the pictures they show you or videos they show you when like they're talking about these products is like the nano next to a Lutron keypad. And it's like, it's literally in the same like one U or single gang spot. Um, and that's how tiny it is. But like, it just, when you hold it in your hand, it's like a different thing. And it's just, it's so tiny. I could like hide it anywhere in the house. And that's the point of it. It's like, you could just install it on the ceiling or the wall or somewhere and like barely even notice it. All right, so it's a cool, cool looking product. I think we're all jealous that you got to put it in. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was trying to get Gavin set up, but he, you know, he's just poo pooing the idea, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It's that price, you know. Uh, he, uh, if he I can't get the lawn more, you know, I get Josh. You know, I'm sorry. Priorities. You could get like three Joshes for the price of a lawn mower. No, 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 no. It adds up. Um, oh yeah, well, yeah. Especially with your mansion over there, so you're gonna need a lot of microphones. Supposedly, someone in my area has like 29 microphones or something in their house. 
what's the monthly cost on those? Because you got to pay, don't you pay per microphone um, a monthly? Yeah, yeah, it's like a monthly, yeah. or you can do yearly, or you can do lifetime. Yeah. So wow. It's not per microphone, I mean, it's per room of controlled area. So uh, Is it? Yeah, it's, it, well, it used to be. I don't know if they changed it to you now, but usually it was like per zone of mm. like room. So if you had... Well, wouldn't that be six rooms? It would be this price. If you got it to like nine or 10, it was this price, 15 or more. It was, why would you have more than one microphone in a room though? I don't know. I guess if it's a big room though. I don't know how that works. I only, I I really did not pay attention to the training when I went into it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a a savant on the product yet. (laughs) So if, if you're, if you're a Josh AI dealer and you're listening to this podcast, don't, uh, don't write an angry email to me. I should know more, but I only did the training once and I, I can't, I can't, they won't let me into the store to actually buy the product. I just did the training. Um, and I can't get, I'm sad. I can't get in there and buy a t-shirt. I want a t-shirt. I'll send you a t-shirt. I know a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'll trade. But, I'll trade you. I'll give you a cup. <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'll, I'll trade it for one of those buttons, though. Buttons. Maybe two of the buttons. buttons. Yeah, the two Wi-Fi buttons. Oh, the Shelly Wi-Fi buttons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are nice. Those are nice. But anyway, so that that's going on in the tech space. But the the home projects are never ending, as I'm sure you two know. And so this past week. What is it this week? No, it was last week. Sorry. Last week I had the roof replaced on the house. And so it's all new and it's shiny and it looks really good. I think I worried the contractor though, because he, you know, he brings me out at the end of the day and he goes, how does it look? And I was like, yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> and he was like, what do you, what do you mean? It looks pretty good. Like, I think it looks amazing. And I was like, I mean, it's a roof. Like, what do you want me to say? About it? Like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I've been sweating <laughs> for three days. <laughs> He wasn't sweating. He had the people installing it for him. He was just walking around the house all day. <laughs> but it was just like, yeah, it's a roof. But it, the, it was nice because, you know, one of the reasons we chose them is because we don't have any ventilation in our attic. We have like the we have the ridge cap and then we have two gable vents. And like it, it was just miserable up there. Like It was just insanely hot. I'm in a decent amount of attics and I know what a hot attic is. And like this one was just it was not good. And so part of the, the process and why we chose them is they put an actual roof intake vent um, basically at the very bottom of the roof line um, because our, our soffits are very small. They're like two inch soffits. And so there's not really space to add proper vents there. And to redo all that would just be obnoxiously expensive anyway, I'm sure. Um, so they actually put this little, uh, the same equivalent just at the very bottom of the roof and we can post the picture as well. Um, and that's actually where the, the, the intake vent is. And so it actually channels air in that way. Um, and I've noticed a little bit of difference already. Like I think before it was about like 30 to 40 degrees hotter in the attic than it was outside. And now it's like 10 to 20. Hmm. And so we'll, we'll see how the long term you know, solution is with that, but I've been ha- very happy with it so far. And the biggest reason we replaced the roof is because it was leaking. So it, it, it's not leaking now. So <laughs> that's that, a big that bonus. That problem. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was annoying too, because like you, you go up there, like it just, you could just tell the, the, the decking and stuff hadn't been replaced in quite a while. Like they had just, they probably just shingled over whatever was there before. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things is I was like, you know, well, we're doing this whole roof. Let's just replace all the decking at the same time. And I, I had a lot of contractors push back. And they're like, no, you don't need to do that. Like, we'll just replace what's bad and all this stuff. And I was like, look, I know, but like, I just, I don't want to deal with this problem anymore. And if it's, it's not that big of a house. So to replace all the decking, how much is it? And one guy's like, well, it's like a thousand dollars. And I was like, I'm, I'm about to spend $10,000 on the roof. A thousand dollars added on isn't that much more just to guarantee that like I won't have problems with it for many, many years. And so, like that was part of it. They literally ripped the entire roof off and replaced them. When when I when we did our roof, it was during that time where like uh, the lumber people were ripping off like the world here. Uh, I guess in the United States, it was like a two by four was like twenty dollars or something. And I was just out there like staring at them as they were cutting out like parts of the roof. <laughs> like I don't want the decking replaced. <laughs> like, I I just you know I guess if it's rotten, you have to replace it, but. Uh, no, no. When we got ours put on, I did not go that far. It was, they did what they could and, and it looks fine. It's a roof. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure they probably could have replaced not even all of it and it would have been fine, but I just, I didn't want to deal with it. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things that's like, I never want to think about it again and whoever buys the house or if I rent it out or whatever, they're going to have a good deal at some point. So, um, and then part of the process of replacing the roof, 
um, is I wanted to replace the insulation as well. So when you went up in the attic, there was a, like a very small layer that was basically original to the house. And it was the, the batting insulation, which I'm sure at the time was great. But now it's just like there, there's basically no insulation up there. It's, it's compressed over the years. Um, and it's just, you know, it's 70-year-old insulation. So it needs to be replaced. And so I was like, well, you know, there's been water dripping on it over the years and stuff like that. We'll go ahead and just rip the insulation out at the same time. And we'll go ahead and, ju- and just get all that done, too. And part of that process is I wanted to actually find a company to go around and actually seal all the holes and everything. Because if you can put insulation in there all day long. But if you're not going around and actually sealing all the holes that are going into the attic, then you're still wasting energy. And so I wanted a company to go in there and, and install new insulation and do the air sealing. And, and I found a company to do that. Um, they're charging me probably way too much money compared to just doing it myself. <laughs> but if there's anything I've learned about my house is I don't want to do half of this stuff. Yeah. And so speaking of that, though, they quoted me $2,000 just to remove the old insulation. And I was like, mm, that seems really high. And so the guy was like, well, you know, how much would it have to be for you for you to let me do it? And I was like, well, it'd have to be like the five hundred to a thousand dollar range. And he was like, oh no, it, you know, it's like six hundred dollars just for the dumpster, and you know, it's like eight hundred dollars just in labor. So you know, it's at least going to be fifteen hundred dollars. And I was like, yeah, I'm not paying that. I was like, I'll, I'll have it removed for you, and you just won't have to worry about it. And then you just come in and do your air sealing and your new insulation. And so I got up in the attic last Sunday and I was like, all right, let's go ahead and do this. And I started ripping the insulation out and I got four 30 gallon bags together. And I was like, I'm, I'm not doing this. Why, <laughs> why did I, why did I think I could do this? Was, this? this is a horrible mistake. <laughs> this is awful. And so I posted on Facebook, one of the local groups. And I was like, look, I'm looking for somebody to come remove my insulation. Um, and I had this, I had this guy message me and he goes, how much do you want to pay? And I was like, mm, how about $500? And he was like, deal. Can I come over tonight? <laughs> and I was like, sure, man. While the sun is down. And, <laughs> and, uh, and he, showed, he wanted to come over at like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, all right, that sounds awful, but I won't even be home. So what about like five? And he was like, all right. So it, it's this really heavy set guy, which is obviously is running the whole crew with two other uh, older gentlemen. And this guy gets up there without a bodysuit on or a mask or anything and just goes up there and just starts ripping all the old insulation out. And they spent two hours, two guys, uh, ripping the insulation out and bagging it up. And they just put it in the backyard. And this guy gets out of the attic and he's just coated. Like his arms are just all black. He looks disgusting. And you got to remember when I went up there and did my four bags, I was wearing like a respirator and goggles and like a whole body suit because I was like, this insulation probably has asbestos in it or something. <laughs> I'm not going to breathe all this in. And this guy just did not care. He just went and ripped it all out and they knocked it out in two hours. And that was the best $500 I think I've ever spent in my life. It's amazing. Well, at least we have quality health care in this country. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. So good. As he's, as he's smoking four cigarettes. <laughs> I was like, well, obviously he's not really worried about it. He already has fiberglass in his lungs. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, I do this all the time. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier to pay somebody else to do it for you, you know? Yeah. Well, this time it definitely was. Yeah. No, oh, 100% that was. <laughs> but now I got to get back up there this weekend and run some wires before I heavily insulate because they're going to put like 18 inches of insulation in. And I do not want to go back in that attic after that. So. Hmm. Yeah, run conduit. Gotta, like that's my only serious. Mm, probably not, but know. like Smurf pipe or something. You, 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 like yeah. it, from point A to point B. So like what I did was like I have a particular run of my house is long, like straight down. It, my house is like a T shape, I guess. And so like over the garage, not very hard to get to. But like if I go to the master bedroom side, it, it's like I don't want to crawl through that. So I had an, another access cut in when we were kind of doing stuff in the master bedroom. And I basically ran a vac pipe essentially over there. And that's, I still, I just used it the other day to pull like two cat fives through. So like uh, it beats getting up in the attic and doing anything else. Uh, And it's all contained in a, in a single pipe. So yeah, this, this house is like a thousand fifty square feet. So, I mean, there's not really, I could run conduit. It's about what, what mine is. I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm not, yeah, I don't want to get a funky anymore. shape. Mine, mine is just like a ranch. So, there's, there's a very yeah, simple layout. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it takes me like five seconds to walk across the whole attic. So, 
Mm, yeah. The, 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 what stops me from doing that is that T like where the two roofs come down at the same right. spot and you can't actually get through there easily. I guess I could, but when yeah. they ran the ducting for the AC, they kind of ran through the, oh, all the yeah, they shove it right through yeah. there. So you have like no, you have to like belly crawl or something. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one's pretty wide open. Like you're not walking around the attic, but you can like crouch around the whole thing. So, I mean, it's not terrible. My problem with the whole house though, is that it's like two by two walls. And so like, I don't like, I, could probably fit conduit in there but it's gonna be like one inch conduit or something hmm. and it's like eh, it might be that's enough not, for a couple yeah, wires. Not worth it, yeah. so not really worth it all right well you're gonna have a very energy efficient house soon so that's good yeah i'm hoping yeah i mean the ac runs all the time right now so i really think it will make a big <laughs> no difference insulation, like, yeah <laughs> yeah one big heat and right now it has no insulation so i yeah. mean it's doing really good <laughs> But they're coming Monday to do that. So I'll I'll update the podcast on on that process because I've never went through air sealing and stuff like that. So Yeah, it's pretty cool. And they're doing like a proper blower door test to find out where the leaks are in the house and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, don't they use like a smoke system or something to like and they turn it on? So yeah. yeah. That's cool. Very cool. Yes, yeah, so I took I took the day off Monday to watch that whole process. And we'll make some videos. Post it on Mastod. Oh, wait. Ooh. Somebody <laughs> banned me. I don't know what happened. You know how many messages I'm getting about, you know, that they want to send to you? It's like. I think I talked to like two people on there. Who, who said it? Well, oh, well, the gentleman who was nice enough to send me a reminder today is National Pawpaw Day. Exactly. Like, oh, you're missing out. Nice. Missing I know. Out. So. Yeah, I missed the Pawpaw Festival this past weekend. Happy National Pawpaw Day. Yeah. It's like there's a link to Seth Johnson, there's a link to Gavin Campbell, and it's just TJ. <laughs> <You know? laughs> sad. It happened. It's so I'm sad. On, I'm on LinkedIn now if you want to follow no, me. On who no, uses LinkedIn? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. That's, that's I think true. everybody's on LinkedIn. No one wants to admit they are on it. You only open it to get rid of the notifications on the phone. I just use it to stalk people once in a while, but then it's it's annoying because it tells them that. I, I just I have OCD with notifications, so it keeps sending me notifications. So I open it to clear them and close it off again. I haven't lo- I, I I logged into LinkedIn probably seven years ago, and I I I think I updated my where my employment was yeah. and then i walked away from it <laughs> and and the problem is is people ask you for like a headshot and they're like i'll just go use your linkedin one and mine is like me when i was like backpacking in europe from a few years before i updated it like probably like 10 years ago i guess at this point probably yeah close to 10 years so yeah i had like a backpack on and i'm standing like in the middle of the river thing in paris and yeah it's not it's not a very good picture but that's what comes up now they, they grab my headshot off LinkedIn. I'm like, what? All right, whatever. (laughs) Maybe I should get a headshot. (laughs) Oh, well. Happy National Pop Holiday, guys. I'm jealous I didn't get any this year. That was on the 21st. Was it? No, it was 10 hours ago. Peter, oh yeah, I guess September 21st. Well, that's today. Depending on when you're listening to the podcast, it could be yesterday or last week. Last month. A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Whenever, whenever, uh, because podcasts are forever, so whenever we're not going to tell you when to listen to this. <laughs> whenever our home tech home assistant actually gets on the editing thing, <laughs> get it out. All right, guys, that's fun. I, 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 I guess I will have to come up with some projects for next week. I, I, uh, we're home this weekend, so I definitely will have things to do, but I'll have more project updates next week. I promise. Promise, guys. Okay. Promise. Yeah. Well, we do want to give you a big thank you to everyone who supports the show, but especially those who are able to financially support the show through our Patreon page. If you don't know about the Patreon page, head on over to hometech.fm slash support to learn how you can support Home Tech for as little as a dollar a month. Any pledge over $5 a month gets you a big shout out here on the show, but every single pledge gets you an invite to our private Slack chat, The Hub, where you and everyone else can go in there. And I, there's been a lot of conversations about that Amazon Hub thing, you know, because it is The Hub. I guess I should ring the bell, right? There we go. Whoops. Forgot to do that. Been, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a number of years. It's like we went off hubs and now we're back. We're back. The hubs are back in style. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you want to help with the show but can't support financially, totally understand. Just appreciate a five star review in the podcast app of your choice. It really helps people find the show and start listening here. Uh, guys, that's going to wrap up here another week. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Take care. Till next time. Cut. That was-
was a long show. Holy cow. Like There's an hour and 40 minutes. Jeez. I know. What? Jeez. I, I have to nar- narrow it down? I guess. No, nah, no. Nah, leave it long. People can listen. Add chapters. Add chapters. We talked more about this week than Cedia. <laughs> we did. There's more to talk about. 